we investigated the effect of fixed duration targeted treatment with netoclax combination as compared with fixed duration standard chemoimmunotherapy in previously untreated patients with CLL and with coexisting comorbidities within this phase 312 of the German CIA study group that is called CL14 following the systematic approach of the German CIA study group here. And You may know that already the vast majority of patients really are older than 70 years of age and have clinically relevant coexisting comorbidities. Now, such unfit patients, as we loosely call them, then would require then less toxic regimens. And if we look at the current standard of care for these patients, then it is really as simple as that. It is either fixed duration chemoimmunotherapy or, uh, since more recently, continuous indefinite targeted therapy. And that was the reason why we decided to uh, develop a new treatment regimen that is a fixed duration targeted therapy. And that was the purpose we wanted to address with this unmet me uh, medical need. And we wanted to evaluate fixed duration targeted treatment with uh, venetoclax and obinutuzumab. In fact, we wanted to replace chemotherapy by venetoclax and combine this with another strong compound with obinutuzumab and um, compare this against to the standard uh, therapy in this patient population, which is obinutuzumab and chloramucil. And by doing so, we wanted to introduce now a new therapy for poor patients with previously untreated CLL and with coexisting um, co uh, conditions. Now, what we did, we designed CL14 then as a multi-center open-label phase 312 where patients were centrally reviewed in order to uh, confirm their eligibility and including their coexisting medical conditions here uh, with a CS greater than 6 and or a calculated creatinine clearance below 70 milliliter per minute. And we then um, randomized the patients, 432 patients, uh, to receive either venetoclax or venetuzumab for 12 cycles or a chloramucil or venetuzumab for 12 cycles, and 216 patients uh, got randomized in each treatment group, making up the intention to treat population here. Uh, no crossover was allowed. The primary endpoint was progression-free survival. Now, at the time of data cutoff, all patients had completed treatment for at least a year, And uh, these are um, the efficacy results. The overall and complete response rates were significantly higher with venetoclax or venetuzumab with a complete remission rate of 50% as compared to a complete remission rate of 23% for chloramucil or venetuzumab. And these excellent response rates translated then into an improved progression-free survival. The progression-free survival was significantly higher for venetoclax or venetuzumab as compared to chloramucil or venetuzumab. Median progression-free survival has not been reached in either group. Hazard ratio 0.35. Additionally, that was defined as a secondary endpoint. An independent review committee assessed the data and confirmed these results. Accordingly, the 24 months progression-free survival was 88% in the venetoclax or venetuzumab group as compared to 64% in the uh, chloramucil or venetuzumab. And the analysis of the median MRD levels over time, this is the minimal residual disease, uh, they show that MRD negativity occurred very early and was sustained. That's the most important thing here. was sustained after completion uh, of therapy in most patients treated with venetoclax or venetuzumab, whereas a rapid increase in MRD was noted then for patients treated with chloramucil or venetuzumab. And actually starting right after completion of treatment, as you can see here. Now, accordingly, the MRD negativity rates in the intention to treat population assessed by ISOPCR are, as I say, were significantly higher with venetoclax or venetuzumab in both peripheral blood, and that is 76%, with a 35%, but also in bone marrow, and I'm not showing the data here. Now, I would like to conclude. We showed that fixed duration venetoclax plus ovinutuzumab can be safely administered to elderly patients with CLN with relevant comorbidities with no new toxicities <coughs> identified and no increase in known toxicities. Now, I do apologize, uh, apologize for not showing this data here, but I will be showing that later today. And this regimen provides a superior outcome compared to clambucil and ovinutuzumab regarding progression-free survival overall response rates complete response rates and MRD negative responses. And this benefit have been observed in all relevant subgroups, including patients with unmutated IgG mutation status or patients with TP53 mutation and or deletion. 
And to me, what is most important are, and, and, and remarkable, this is the fixed duration therapy uh, for 12 months only, and hence it achieves the highest rate of MRD negative responses observed in a randomized clinical study so far. And based on these results, uh, the combination venetoclax obinutuzumab have been approved um, by the FDA in, at May 15 uh, in the uh, real-time oncology program, and also uh, the full manuscript went online actually last week. So, yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you for sharing this groundbreaking <coughs> results with us. Uh, and congratulations with the New England Journal paper and with the Presidential Symposium this afternoon. Thank you very much. So, who wants to comment? Who has questions? Yes, please. Could you repeat that? Doris Berger, Springer Medizin, okay. in Germany. Uh, if you have, uh, if a patient has a relapse, can you start the, the fixed combination again and get you um, good results? Yeah, that is a really good question indeed. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, I mean, this is, it's the thing. Unfortunately, we do not have so many progressors so far, so we don't have any data on this. It's just 14 progressors in this one group, yeah? But on the other hand, this is, this is crucial. I mean, we need to look into this, how these patients may respond, but we have no data within this trial so far. Thank you. Further questions? I think you did not really discuss toxicity profiles. Are there any differences between the conventional arm with the tablets of chloramicil plus the antibody versus the experimental arm? Thank you for bringing this up. The toxicity effects were similar in severity in both <coughs> treatment arms, and I think that is important to mention. It's important to mention because normally we say this is a chemotherapy-free regimen, but still they were equal, yeah? But there were no added toxicities or no new toxicities identified, which is a good thing. And also um, uh, patients, patients uh, really did uh, a finished treatment duration. It was just around 10% that had to um, discontinue treatment. And another question, because patients are most interested in whether they live longer. Uh, I think it's too premature to say something about overall survival, right? Is, are you expecting any difference uh, between the two arms? This is, again, a very good question. Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's very tricky. I mean, overall survival is yes. indeed very important. But in this study, we, we went for the progression-free survival as primary endpoint. So overall survival is actually defined as a secondary endpoint. And in fact, at the last one in the hierarchical order. So we didn't really expect, we wanted to have a very uh, a, a very um, a soon primary endpoint uh, analysis here. And what happened is we, we have not seen any difference in overall survival so far. Hence, we have a relatively short follow-up of 28 months. And also, there's a very limited number of events so far. I mean, the all-cause mortality is around <coughs> 7 and 9 percent. So that might be just too early to detect any difference in overall survival. And then there's the MRD data, and that would be really interesting to see what happens with longer follow-up, sure. to see if these really negative MRD sure. uh, data will eventually translate into an improved overall survival. Right. That's exactly what would have been my next question. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. And so, so suppose if there's no difference in overall survival, would this be the new standard of care? Normally, the one who's presenting the data is not claiming this, but what we did is we presented the data last week at ASCO and then there was a, a, a commentary afterwards from Matthew Davids uh, from Boston and he said, well, this is the new standard therapy, patients will be treated with this uh, right now. And the same goes for the German Sea Study Group, we would recommend that, but we will have to wait, of course, for the approval of the, uh, of the uh, EMA then. Right. Yes. It has been submitted to EMA as well? Yes. Okay. Can confirm that. Final question? Um, to Kirsten. I have a question. Yes. Annette Reindel from BioWorld. Is this on? Yes. Um, so I normally think of these targeted therapies as really not having these responses that go on beyond treatment. That, that is really something you see more in immunotherapy. I, do you understand why this, this seems to be you know, long term or even permanent? Well, thank you very much. Yeah, that was our thinking. We wanted to combine, as I said, we wanted to combine venetoclax, the BCA2 inhibitor, with another strong compound with obinutuzumab. There is some preclinical data suggesting 
an, uh, an additive effect of these two, which is most beneficial when combined with obinutuzumab. So that is what we were thinking. But actually, you know, we don't know yet. We will see what, what longer follow-up brings. But yes, there is, it, is, um, it is remarkable <coughs> after, uh, after completion of treatment, these response rates are still so durable right now. Yes, I would agree with you. Thank you. But, but do you have any idea why that is, like at the cellular level? Um, we, we don't know yet, no. Basically.